uh, last thing we said was about the mechanism of the MI. Now the last two ideas, I know I said those would be the last, but those are really the last. <laughs> okay, is that there's something called mirror image. What is this? Mirror image is basically, you know, if you have an infarction here, and this lead gives you a reading of ST elevation, then it means that a lead here will give you ST depression. So on an ECG, when you see elevations and depressions, you take the elevation as a STEMI, as ST elevation myocardial infarction, MI, and this one would just be a mirror image, so it would be meaningless, okay? While if you see only, only depression, and this is your primary sign, then it means this ST depression is the subendocardial ischemia, or you can just say chronic ischemia, okay? This is the mirror image. So it is an ST depression in other leads than the ones with the ST elevation. Okay, this is one point. The other one is regarding the pathologic Q wave. Now we said this and this are Q waves, pathologic Q waves, right? Now, someone might ask, how do we differentiate this QS complex from the one that we see QS complex in V1 when it's a left bundle branch block? The thing is, in bundle branch, the QRS is wide and it comes with secondary STT changes. But this one, the QRS is narrow and you only see this. And when you see it in V1, you probably will see it in V2, meaning it's a septal. Okay, so you have to see a pattern in more than one lead that gives you the same info that there is an infarction here and here and here. Okay, this is one thing. The other one is that the this might be seen normally in AVR. If you remember, AVR was the one. AVR was the one that goes all the way up there, and if like all the normal waves are this way. So AVR would see it as negative. AVR is crazy world. It's the only one that sees everything negative. So if you see this, okay, a QS or a QR in AVR, then you disregard it, okay? Because that's how it normally looks like. All right, that's it. Now, goodbye. Good luck.